Hi, this is Ushio, and welcome back to A Summer with the Shiba Inu. And this is the second part of the gameplay, and also I believe the day I'm uploading this video is the launch day for the game itself. So if the game takes your fancy, check out the link in the description, it is available now to buy. And as always, again, thank you Quill Studios for sending me a copy of the game. Let's keep going with the story, we've just been rescued, hey this way. The voice comes from behind me, and I start my fur rising on end against my will. What, the fish fit it? Someone followed me without noticing? The Labrador Retriever from before emerges as the speaker, falling into step behind me. That was supposed to be a snarl, it just didn't come out right, okay. Did you say something? Um... I hope that was menacing enough. What do you want? Oh, I want to help of course. I'll guide you somewhere safe. What? Who is this dog? I'll just feign ignorance. Somewhere safe? I think you've mistaken me for somebody else. I don't want to be rude, but I know you've been away for a long time, so you probably don't even know where you are. The Labrador's voice is soft, quite a contrast from her towering physique. Well, I'm quite used to this height difference in Kanainda, but seeing her towering over the crowd of Shiba Inus earlier amplifies the difference. What do we do? Um, continue to faint ignorance and hope that she leaves me alone a while. Tell her to get away from me. Um... Neither of these options are particularly friendly. Let's take the direct approach. Get away from me. If you're not going to be helpful, you should just get the fish sticks away from me. I really don't have time to chit chat with strangers. Ah, oh, but we're not strangers. What? You're lying. I've never seen this Labrador in my entire life. I want to help you, Miss Feather. What did you say? That's not my name. You've definitely mistaken me for somebody else. Sorry, let me try that again. I didn't want to be so direct. But you didn't get the hint. Can you speak up? I mean, Sid, bearer of the feather, I want to help you. Fishbone, she really does know who I am. Okay. You want to help me, you say, so I'll ask you this again. Why don't you start by guiding me to a massive rapid transit station? Don't worry, I will. But first, I want you to take this. She produces from her pockets a wristband of sorts. It's a wrist phone. I'll contact you with it so you can reach me in turn. Thank you, but why do you think we'll be in contact after this? There's no reason for me to get involved in whatever it is you want. Well, for one, I guess it'd be troublesome if dogs knew that you were back on the island, so I created a diversion. That's not reassuring. She knows way too much about me. Who the fish bones is she? I need to learn as much about her as possible. I know you could really use my help. You know you've gotten yourself into trouble too, right? You'll probably get arrested for disturbing the peace like you did. I have a story set up, plus I'm a Labrador living on Shiba Inu Island. I'm sure you already know, I'm constantly in the spotlight. I know that all too well, but I'm not going to say that if she doesn't know I lived in the world of Labradors. I'm certainly not going to reveal that to her. Okay, when you put it that way, but like you said, I'm trying to avoid attention, so shouldn't I avoid being associated with you altogether? She sighs, quietly. I hoped it wouldn't come to this, but you need to believe me when I say I want to help you. I can help you find your brother. Okay. I've heard enough. I'll take your dog damn phone. But if I find out that you're any sort of threat to me, you better watch out. Of course, I understand. She offers the paw to me. It's, uh, Cooley, by the way. I'm... Well, you already know my name. We shake paws. The Labrador just smiles mysteriously and gives me a detailed directions to the nearest MRT station. DG station, huh? That means I appeared kind of far south. Good thing it's Taipo, though, where I need to be. Off she goes. Okay. I head into the station while the lab heads off on her own way. Alright, split up. A new acquaintance, though. So many thoughts are running through my head, the entire encounter still seems unreal, and it's something I could never imagine happening. Wow, Sid, focus. You need to get to Max's. I'll find that MRT station, according to the lab's directions. Thank dog, the directions were good. Large hovering signs point out directions to various transit lines. Although I've been to this station in the past, it seems much larger than before. 
the layout having been expanded and rearranged. I slip out my pendant at the gates, scanning it to pay so it will allow me through. I keep the pendant face down and hope that no one thinks it's strange. There's a large interactive display, and I see that there, there are many more lines than before, basically crisscrossing the entirety of Taipur and the outer metropolitan area. These puns, though. I place a paw on the destination, and a route draws itself on the digital display from the current station to my paw. I follow the instructions to the correct platform, and the transit arrives shortly. Alright, we're going to take the train to Maxit some time later. The ride is smooth, and I emerge up north of the city without incident. Here we are. It's a quieter residential area. My destination is sandwiched between other similar buildings that were built to be tall and narrow rather than take up the ground level. Approaching the well-memorized address, I feel more and more apprehensive with each step. A promise is a promise, though. This is the only place I can go. There's an intercom panel on the ground floor. Scrolling through the names, I find the correct one. That's the one. Taking a deep breath, I tap on it. The doors slide open shortly after I tap on the panel, but there's no further response or communication from it. Does Max still live here? I can go in, but what if it isn't Max that just buzzed me in? I hesitate. Less than ideal scenarios running through my head. I take a deep breath. Stop it. There's only one way to find out. I step into the open door and onto a lift so small it could po only possibly fit one dog. Well, one Labrador Retriever, two Shiba Inu. Oh wow, I still can't help but think about space in terms of canine dust space. Soundlessly, the lift rises, and I'm a bundle of nerves. My stomach churns on nothing. I really do hope it's Max. Their intercom might not have two-way communication. My old residence did, but I can't assume everybody has it, even after all these years. I do still have his number on my old phone, but I wonder if my old phone balance is still good. Before I can decide whether to attempt calling ahead, the lift comes to a halt. No other way but forward now. I step outside into the narrow corridor. Doors line the corridor, and I take a look at the order of the numbers before heading in the direction of the number 13. Just as I raise my paw to knock, the door swings wide open. You! Max! There he is! Sid! He ushers me in, and makes sure the door is securely closed. Alright, we're in Max's now. Look who it is! You're finally back. I've been waiting for this moment all these years. It really is him. He's here. He kept his word. I'm so relieved. And I'm so happy to see a familiar face. I reach out my paws to embrace him. He obliges, and I eagerly hug him close. He smells like honey and cream, and I notice that, under my touch, his coat is sleek and as shiny as ever. I'm so happy to see you, dude. Max just yaps happily, wagging his tail so vigorously that I can feel it moving him side to side in my embrace. Alright, happy dogs. Max helps me settle into the place. It's quite cosy, and despite the modern exterior of the building itself, he's decorated his rooms with vintage furniture and flourishes. I get a feeling he's really into vintage aesthetic. Maybe it's making a comeback on the island? He shows me his collection of concert billets arranged on his wall, all of the musicians that I know of, meaning they go back at least a decade. Remember Jay Chow Chow? Of course, I remember when we'd watch his music videos back on our flip phones. The days of 360p, yeah. It's a really nice apartment compared to Max's old one. I suppose his final ranking allowed him an upgrade. He gestures me over to his desk, and as I peer on, he sweeps aside a pile of old records. Then he wiggles under the desk to activate something. There's a hiss, and a panel slides open on the surface of the desk. It's a touchscreen panel, glowing faintly with a green tint. I can see my reflection in it, along with some menu icons that I can't make sense out of. It's a security system. Pretty sophisticated, right? No one would suspect that there would be such a system in an apartment like this. The door's actually secured with hidden bars that can be controlled from here, and there are sensors programmed to detect living matter other than you and me. He goes on and on about the security measures and gadgets, but suddenly I cannot find it in me to focus. I'm really hoping he didn't do all of this for my return, but it's the most obvious explanation. I take a deep breath, holding up a paw to signal that I want to speak. It takes Max a brief moment to notice, but eventually he stops in the middle of his explanation. Max, I really appreciate your preparations. My throat feels closed up, and I swallow and chew on air to make it possible to continue speaking. 
I just, how do I put this? I just want to reiterate that this could be really dangerous for you. I want you to reconsider. Sid. And I think that some dog is following me and I have no idea what she wants. Sid. Sid, it's okay. I've always wanted to be able to finally help you. I promised you long ago that I would stand by your side, even if the world turns against you. And now, you need to let me do that, please. His eyes are warm, and I compose myself. I can't be weak, I need to be calm so I can make the best decisions for Max and myself. Okay, but I need to tell you about the Labrador I met today. She knows a lot about me. I'll start from the beginning. You know, I used the feather to get back to the island. I reappeared at some other night market near DG Station. First thing I saw was this huge crowd of dogs all running away from me, so I thought it was because they all witnessed my grand appearance or something. I don't even know if I appeared with a light of, or puff or smoke or whatever, but I'm pretty sure I appeared out of thin air. But it turned out there was a Labrador just causing a ruckus, so I sneaked away. Then the Labrador just appeared behind me, and she said that she made the distraction on purpose because it would be inconvenient for me to be noticed. She even knows why I'm back on the island. It's really, really unnerving, even to me. Max nods his head solemnly. I might have made a mistake, but she gave me a wrist phone and I took it. I take it out of my pocket and show it to Max. I hadn't put it on yet. He takes it gingerly and examines it from every angle before waving a paw over the central watch face. I've never really looked at a wrist phone up close before and take the opportunity to do so. The circular face, rather than being a screen itself, holds a light source where a hologram is projected from. The hologram functions like a screen of any other electronic device, but it's much larger and can be put away at a simple touch. It kind of looks like a fan unfolding and folding back. This is some really high-tech shit they've got. I angle my body away gradually until I cannot see the contents of the screen, like there's some kind of view angle limit and it works great for me. Sometimes I might be typing or reading questionable material, but even if not, I don't want any other dogs seeing it. She told me to contact her with this. Do you think I should? I'd probably do it anyway, even if Max doesn't agree. I'm not sure how dangerous it's going to be, and I don't want to compromise this safe house. She did mention my brother, though. I just want to find out what she wants. Max is still holding the wrist phone, so I huddle close to him to read and use the menu. I hesitantly touch a portal to the screen, where it says Messages, and it opens the corresponding app as Max looks on. It's empty, so is there a contact list? I scan the interface, but there's no back button. I press the sides of the screen, first left, then right. Nothing. Left. Right, swipe, swipe. How about tapping? Okay, maybe sliding up and down. Nothing. Max, you've been grinning at me for far too long. Can you give me a little help? You can set up any gesture you want to return to the previous screen, but the default is the face. He taps on the wristband face, where the hologram is projected from. Oh. Okay, let's find this lab's contact info. Are you sure you want to get in touch? Do you trust her? Only as much as I trust any old stranger, really. So no, I don't trust her that much, but there's a high enough possibility that she has information that could be useful. It's an uncertain situation, though, and I'm just guessing at the odds. It does seem oddly specific that she knows the main reason I'm back here. The risk may well outweigh the potential gains. Again, with the words potential, possibility, uncertainty, I'm getting deja vu. So cold, calculating. Just the arena training kicking back in, is it? Information, oh, on the reason you decided to come back? I'll snap out of my thoughts as Max starts to speak again. I don't mean to pry, but I'm wondering, what was the reason? You noticed what I said, did you? Well, the truth is, one of the reasons I decided to come back now is to find out if my brother is still alive. Your brother? Chun Weng, was it? Right, he disappeared after the last arena. Yeah, I just had this regret that I didn't even bother finding out what happened before I just upped and left. I understand. I hope you find out what happened. Wait, so this lab, she said that she knows something about him. She was so certain about it. While I have no idea of her intentions, she could either be a powerful ally or an enemy. Either way, I suppose it's best to contact her so she won't blindside us if she is an enemy. Of course, I'll leave it up to you. You've taken me in and I don't want her to follow me back here and jeopardise the place. 
like I said, I agree that it's a good idea to contact her in case she comes here looking for you. But first, let's find her contact information on the phone. We go through the apps, and there are only the essentials. Not in the contact book either. He taps on recent calls, and there is a single call history. Okay. He holds up a paw for a higher five. Thanks Max, got it. You can do the honours though. I tap on the call button, and while it rings, Max sets up the phone call to block our camera feed. Gonna play it safe, and not let her get any hints of my surroundings and whereabouts, just in case. Okay, let's make this call. Oh, there she is. Hey, good to see that you made it somewhere safe. Um, why did you want me to contact you? Like I said, I want to help. And how exactly? Well, as I said, you probably want to stay under the radar. An eye-catching Labrador like myself would be perfect for distracting anyone on your trail, no? I roll my eyes, making sure that she can see my scepticism. Well, I agree that you're definitely eye-catching. From the corner of my eye, I notice Max trying not to smirk widely. Oh, uh, it's, that's not what I meant. But that will make it even more difficult to stay under the radar if anyone on the outside makes a connection between you and me. So, based on that, how really can you help? Um, that's what I was hoping you could tell me. What actions do you plan to execute? How can I help you achieve this? I still don't understand her real intentions, but she does seem sincere. I need to think carefully and consider what I say. Since she's offering her help, it wouldn't hurt to have someone to do the riskier tasks in my place. Well, that's pretty harsh, man. Hmm. Also, are you alone? Cooley breaks the silence before I can formulate a sentence. She might have taken my slow response to indicate silent correspondence with somebody else. I mean, lie? Oh. No. I'm with a friend. An accomplice. I don't know why you have to put it that way, but I guess you could say that. He's a trustworthy companion helping me. Hmm. I didn't expect to have to compete for the position of top hench dog. Well, as you mentioned, I want to find my brother. Before I tell you my plans, I want to know how you know about my brother. Oh, so you're saying that you don't trust me because I have this piece of information. I revealed it so you'd have incentive to contact me, and I was right, wasn't I? She's so smug about successfully having manipulated my actions. Uh, make a quip about a smugliest. Okay, praise. I'm impressed that you set me up and predicted my actions so thoroughly. Kaylee grins. I imagine that it would be no easy task to get hold of the feather bearer, much less keep her attention. I had to rack my brain and do lots of research off the beaten path. Okay, well, you've got my attention. But let's get to the point, shall we? How did you figure out the reason that I came back to the island? Cooley chuckles. A little patience, please, Sid. The truth is, anyone smart enough could figure out that you'd be interested in finding out the fate of your brother. The arena archives are open to anyone that's patient enough to go through the hoops to get approved for access. It wasn't difficult to find online that your brother disappeared after the final arena, but I also confirmed it was from the official records. Your infamous disappearance happened shortly after that, so I guess that you would have regrets about it. Right. That is convincing, if not creepy, but like she said, the records of past arenas are available to public access. Any dog that tries hard enough could put the timeline together and figure it all out. What worries me is her understanding of the way I think. That probably means she researched a lot of other things about my past life. I'd really rather have her as an ally. So, here is my proposal. If you want more information, I have a lead on what you're seeking, but I'd rather not reveal any more over the call. Meet me at DG Station, the store where I found you. Come tomorrow at noon. A lead? But with that, the call was terminated. Gone, she's out. That was quick, okay. Well, what matters is that she says that she has a lead. I'm going to go meet her. Be careful. She does seem sincere, but I really don't know what's in it for her. Max, would you like to come with? I'd like to. But only if you show it's best for your plans, I don't want to burden you. Nonsense, you won't be a burden. 
I think I'm going to trust her for now, and let her know about you, of course. If she tries to threaten you in any way, that trust is gone. Um, Sid. After that, we quickly plan out the transportation, and prepare to sleep. Max insists that I take the bed while he sleeps in the living room, and after some protest, I accept. It's been a really, really long day. So strange that just this morning, I was still in canine, duh, with my job having to work for a living. I just threw all of that away, and soon enough, I'll find out if it was all worth it. I'll tuck the wrist phone away into the bag. If Kaylee had somehow hacked his camera or mic, I'd rather not have it show more than what could be seen during the video call. Good night, Max. I hear his voice from the living room, which is the room next to mine. Sleep tight. And with that, I close my eyes, and sleep soon takes over me. Okay, so we've met this new character, the Labrador, and she's a bit mysterious, not sure whether to trust her or not. I think she's probably after the feather more than she is after Sid, but we're going to have to find out as we progress with the story. So this is Ushio signing off, and hopefully I will see you next time.